Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO module. In the last training session, we have completed assets accounting, where we have went through each configuration steps and the unit testing and have executed each and every business processes which are taking place normally in any company. Now today's topic is few more configuration steps which as a consultant one should know in assets accounting. Most of these configuration steps are optional for you but at times the client asks you for these kind of a configuration steps or the client gives you certain requirement where you should know these configuration steps that how these are done. So we'll be going up with one by one with these all configurations as these are above the basic configurations we have completed earlier. So the configuration steps are on your screen and these all most of them are optional for you uh, for while implementing any of the projects. However, as said, these will vary as per the requirement from client to client. So the configuration steps are as above. First is to specify the number assignment across company code. So let's take one by one each of the configuration parts. So moving to the configuration path over here, the first is to specify the number assignment across the company code. Now in this, you can assign the main asset account number across company codes. That means the same number can be used for more than one company code for asset. Therefore, for each company codes, you can determine from which other company code number assignment is to be carried out. In this step, you define a cross company code assignment of main asset number. And if you do so, If you do not want a cross company code number assignment, you do not need to define any system setting in this particular configuration. So if you move on to the path and we can just have a look that how these configuration looks and how you need to configure in case you need a cross company code asset number assignment. So First, we need to go to the path to that particular configuration step and to going to the path, we need to go to SPRO, then to the SP reference IMG screen, from here to financial accounting new, then to the assets accounting. And from assets accounting, you'll see organization structure and then specify the number assignment. So the next is organizational structure. And then you can see the step over here, the specify number assignment across company codes. So if you execute it, you can see the path. Now over here, each company code is assigned with its own company code over here. Even you can assign a different company code in this path if you want to follow that company code's asset number across your company code. For example, my company code is 1200 and I want to follow the asset number of company code 1000 then I can put over here as number company code is 1000. So the system will do is the company code 1200 will now start following up the asset number uh, main asset account number from the company code 1000. So this is something which is very rare where the client asks for such kind of a things. Normally we don't follow these kind of a things at all. It's a very rare that out of 100% any 5% customer will ask such kind of a scenarios. So normally we don't take this as a standard practice and we don't suggest any kind of a solutions but in case anything such comes to you that particular option is again available in the SAP system. So 
right now we will not be assigning any any cross company code we will be keeping our own company code over here that is 1200 against 1200 so we do not want the cross company code number range and hence we will not be making any changes to this particular steps as you can see in the screen also every company code is assigned to its own company code none of them has been assigned to a to a different company codes even if you go down so over here you can find these companies have been assigned to a different company codes over here that means these company codes will be following the asset main asset number from the company code 1000 but we uh, for our company code is not needed to follow it because as a standard process you should follow your own company codes number range instead of copying the other company codes number so we will not be doing any changes in it we will moving back so that is about the first configuration part of specifying the number assignment across the company codes moving to the second is defining how depreciation area post to the general ledger now this is a very important part you should must focus it and understand it that how the depreciation works how the depreciation are posted real time to the general ledger accounts so in this the system can post the APC transaction that is acquisition and production cost this is also known as the acquisition value or the gross value in this the system can post the gross value or APC value transactions of one depreciation area to the general ledger online automatically now discussing in broad this is basically is that if you have already did the configuration you have seen that the depreciation is posted real time to the general ledger but how the system decides the depreciation has to be posted to the general ledgers and to how the system decides that out of four different depreciation area from which depreciation area the system should automatically update to the ledger account so normally depreciation area 01 is the one from which the values are updated in the general ledger so when you execute the depreciation run that is AFAB which we discussed in the last lecture the values are calculated on the basis of depreciation area 01 and when we go and we, we execute depreciation run those values which is calculated as per the depreciation area 01 are posted to the general ledger account which are assigned in the account determination which we have done earlier under GL assignment so it is done real time as you execute AFAB depreciation run and the values get updated in the general ledger account but how the system decides that there are four different depreciation area one is 01 another is depreciation area 10 20 and 30 that 01 has to be updated to the general ledger so that is what we will be looking into it if you go to the path now the path says asset accounting integration with general ledger and how we define depreciation area so moving to the integration with general ledger accounting in this you can see over here depreci define how depreciation area post to general ledger account if you execute this over here you will find that for the depreciation area 1200 there are two depreciation areas over here that is one is 010 another is 10 now out of these two even I have explained this earlier to you in the last uh, in asset accounting earlier training sessions that so you can see the values over here for one the value is assets posted in real time in the GL when the value is zero that means the area does not post so normally the depreciation area is zero one always have the GL as number one that means the area post in real time and the area post in real time means as you execute execute the depreciation run the values get up impacted in the asset accounting 
and those particular depreciation for that periods are posted to the general ledger account in case you want to change the real account depreciation account posting from a 01 depreciation area to 10 you need to assign the depreciation area as 1 in the depreciation area 10 you need to change the values of the GL as 1 and 0 and accordingly the values will get if I put over here as 1 that means in that case now the federal tax depreciation area value will get updated in the ledger account but normally we always take the depreciation area 1 as per the local company's accounting policies so that is what is uh, about this particular part how depreciation area is posted to the general ledger in real time moving to the next configuration step is to specify financial statement version for assets report so in this we specify which financial state version the system is to use as a default per depreciation area this default applies when a financial statement version is contained in the sort version used for a given report so if you go for this the path over here is the same but just to change is the specify financial statement version for assets reports so you need to execute this and over here let the screen first process over here you can select your company code and after selecting your company code you need to go to assign financial statement version so when you double click on that you will find a list of financial statement versions over here so over here you need to define your own financial state version as per that your balance it will be processed so which financial statement version you define over here according to that your financial statements will be reflected to you in this if you want you can assign this first depreciation area 01 to a different financial statement version and the second financial statement version to a different as well so it's up to you how you want your your balance sheets to be reflected as per your depreciation area and accordingly you assign your depreciation area to that particular financial statement over here moving to the next is specify transfer of APC value now in this the standard system we follow and that is what we have already been following that the asset balance sheet values from depreciation area 01 to all other depreciation areas during posting the only exception to this rule over here is the area are revaluation the area for revaluation and for investment support as well as derived depreciation area therefore you only need to carry out this step if you want to copy the posting values from a different depreciation area and not the depreciation area 01 in this step you define the transfer rule for posting values of depreciation area so if you want to transfer the value of depreciation from some other depreciation area instead of depreciation area 01 over here you can change the rule for that so if you change the rule and you apply that rule to some different depreciation area then the value will post from that particular depreciation area to the general ledger's account so in this step you define the transfer rule so let's see the path we need to go to valuation then to depreciation area and then in that you will find the system seems slight slow so let's take quite so you can see the path over here that we went to financial accounting new then to asset accounting and then to devaluation the then to depreciation area and then to the specify transfer of APC values 
So now we will execute specify transfer of APC values. And now in this you can see that the, there are two depreciation areas for the chart of depreciation 1200. Where in depreciation area 1, the valuation value over here is defined as 00. Whereas in depreciation area 10, that is federal tax, the value defined is 01. If we execute over here, if we go for F4 and see the list of values available, we will find So you can see there are two values 0, 01 and 10. So this first depreciation area 0, 01 uh, you cannot change the values in that because that is posted real time to the general ledgers. But in the second one you can change the value if you want that in depreciation area 10 the, the values of depreciation area 0, 01 should be posted in that case you can select that over here as 0, 01 and if you want in depreciation area 10, the values should be posted from federal tax itself. Then you can go for taking the another value that is 10 over here. So this is how it works. You can change the rules how the value will be taken up as per the depreciation area in this particular case. So we'll keep it as 01 as it was. We will not change anything in it because these are the standard processes over here. If you change the rules, we need to do a lot of testing and things, how the values will change, how this will impact to the, to the system and the valuation of assets as well. So moving back, now we are done with this particular part. Moving to the next configuration step is define a screen layout for asset depreciation area. So going to the path now again for this, no. the path says we need to go to asset accounting then to master data and then to screen layout over here and then to define the screen layout for asset depreciation area. So we will move to this in the SAP system. So let's go to the path now over here. We need to go to asset accounting, then to master data. In master data, we need to go to the screen layout. Screen layout we discussed is basically decides which fields has to be suppressed or required or which are not needed can be suppressed from the screen so that you don't have to revisit that particular field again and again. So when you create an asset master as we earlier created in the last number of sessions you can see uh, in slash as02 when you click when we create go for a change of asset. So suppose we take any asset over here and we put the company code and enter on the screen it will take you to the master data of assets. Normally asset master data is divided into two parts, two screen layouts. These all general time dependent, allocation, origin, net worth tax, these all are a part of asset master data. Whereas this depreciation area is a separate part which is known as the depreciation master area. So the asset depreciation area part is separate from the normal asset master data and that is why if you need any fields to be made required or optional or suppressed in this particular part we need to go to the transaction define a screen layout for asset depreciation area. So in this we can make changes to the depreciation area screen over here we want we can uh, suppress some of the fields from over here even if we want we can add certain fields to this as well. So what and how these can be done we'll see that in this particular asset that is 7000000 and we will make certain changes and we'll see those impact in this part. So let's move on to this screen define screen layout for asset depreciation area. 
from here we define the depreciation what need to be filled what requirement as per and it is possible to make different specification in each depreciation area as well so what you need to do is you need to select your own screen layout so the screen layout which we are using is 1000 and once you select this 1000 you need to go to filled group rules and double click on it over here and you will find that this is the list which is coming in front of you so out of these whichever you have put as an optional over here will be reflected to you on the screen there and those we don't want they will not be reflected to you so you can see in the asset master that uh, the depreciation area, area number, depreciation area, depreciation key, useful life, period and depreciation start date are reflected over here to you. And these all fields over here has been marked as required or optional. So how you decide that these fill need to be optional or required you can make changes as per that over here if I want I can make those changes if uh, you go even further you can double click on any of these depreciation and area it will further show you certain values and certain more fills so when I double click on to this particular row over here it will take me to then another screen again now and you can see there are certain more screens this is for depreciation area 01 you can see over here here you can find the depreciation key, the useful life if you have defined you, it will be reflected to you over here. You can see the depreciation start date, then change over here. If you want, you can put the scrap value over here as well. Suppose you decide that the asset has a scrap value at the end of the its life, you can even mark over here the scrap value, whatever you want to give it as. So you can define the scrap value, it can define the scrap percentage value as well over here. So these all are you can see as an optional part over here to you. If I want I can make certain fills out of these as a mandatory as well. So that can be done only with the help of these filled group rules and over here you can see there are different fills which are optional to you which are hidden to you suppressed. So suppose for example out of these all screen over here I don't want to see this interest calculation. So you can find the interest calculation field over here that is this I want this particular field to be suppressed from this screen so how that can be done let's move to hide that particular field now so what you can do is you can select this no option over here and when you select this no over here and you can save the options over here so this particular configuration will get saved in your request as you can see so once you have done that particular change now we can go back and we will execute this again from the very beginning because whenever you make any customization changes you need to exit that particular transaction and you have to re-enter the transaction so I will be re-entering to this particular transaction AS02 enter and now I have filled the asset the company code again I will be entering the asset master and now I will visit the depreciation area so we'll go to the depreciation area as we have made certain changes in the screen layout of depreciation area so we'll double click on this depreciation area again and when you double click to it you can see now it will take you to the next screen so you can see over here now the changes that the interest calculation has been suppressed from here even if you want you can again go back to this screen layout and you can want you can make certain fields mandatory as well like this depreciation key should always be mandatory because if you don't fill this your depreciation will not be calculated so this is how this screen layout works for depreciation area similarly you can do the same thing with other assets as well
moving to the next now is screen layout for asset master record so what changes we did we did only to the depreciation area part as of now similarly you can make changes to the rest of the asset master as well so we we have seen in the last configuration that how the depreciation area screens can be changed can be man, can be made mandatory or optional or can be suppressed as well so if we leave this particular depreciation area as on one side whatever rest in the asset master data is related to the asset master data only part so if you want any fields to be suppressed again or to be made optional or mandatory for any of these tab that is general time dependent or allocation or origin and net worth you can do that with the transacts with the customization over here that is defining the screen layout for asset master data so if we go to this particular now part making changes in the asset master fields as per the screen layout you can see the above over here the field that is define a screen layout for asset master data you need to go and you need to execute this field over here so once i execute this it takes you to the next field over here you need to double click on to the define screen layout and now here you will find all these steps which you have seen in the asset master over here as general data time dependent allocation origin net worth these all field will be reflected to you over here but how you can see that so you can see we have created our own layout if you remember when did the configuration of asset accounting i want to make the changes in the screen layout of suppose plant and machinery so what i will be doing is i will be selecting only the plant and machinery part and then i need to go to the logical field groups logical field groups means that in which of the field groups you want to make the changes with so there are different field groups over here you can see the general is termed as one of the field group time dependent allocation origin these are separate different field groups so whichever field group you want the changes to be done you need to select that particular field out of these so suppose i select the general data then i need to go to the field group rules and general data you will see that which are the different fields available in this general data basically means it consists the general information relating to your assets and the asset uh, uh re regarding the asset particularly that how when it has been purchased what is the description of the asset how many quantities been purchased then what is the inventory number what is the capitalization date in case the asset has been retired then what is the deactivation date of the assets so all these different things are been stored in the general data part similarly the posting information posting information controls your that the asset belongs to which particular business area or the maybe the plant or the room number or location and the cost center so those areas related to the postings as the value get posted in the asset they are posted on the basis of those uh, business area cost center or plant as per that so you can see in the general data there are different fields over here to you some of many of these fields will also be matched with your asset master over here in the general tab you can see the description account determination serial number inventory number quantity over here you can see the these things these all fields you will find over here in the general data as well so out of these if you want certain fields now to be made optional or mandatory even you can do that for example suppose i go to this particular screen over here and now i want few things to be suppressed for example i want this serial number to be suppressed from my asset master field so you need to go over here and you need to select that serial number over here and you need to go to 
select this part third column that is the suppressed part and when you click on to the no no means it will not be displayed on to you on the asset master screen in AS02 or 03 or AS01 even so once you have selected this suppose in the same way I want the quantity to be made mandatory then I can select the quantity over here on the required part so in that case whenever you will create any asset the quantity will become mandatory late now onwards so we can go and we can save this screen over here for planted machinery and we'll see this that how the changes take place in your asset master so the changes have been saved with the request and now we'll move to the master we will execute the transaction again AS02 enter now I did the changes in the plant and machinery asset class if you remember so I need to select an asset which belongs to plant and machinery there only I can make those I can see those changes that the serial number has been suppressed and the quantity has become mandatory so let's take like example generator so I took the generator over here now enter so when I entering in to the general master data of this particular asset that is generator you can see over here now that the serial number have been suppressed the serial number over here used to be reflected above inventory number but now it has been hidden that is it has been suppressed now onwards and you can see the quantity has become mandatory you can see the tick mark over here which is reflecting to you whenever you find any tick such tick mark on any field that means it is a required field you must need to put value into it so now you need to put the value over here otherwise it will not allow you to save the transactions so it will give you the message you can see fill in all the required entry field that is you need to fill the quantity now so suppose I put the quantity as 1 now I can go and you can save it and the system will allow me to save the asset master data so this is how your screen layout plays so it's a very important part where number of things are there in the screen layout which you can give to the client as per its requirement So now you can see that the asset master has been so the asset has been saved and the changes have been done in the asset master. Now moving to the next step, next configuration. So the next part is deactivate asset class from chart of depreciation. At times it happens that suppose you have created number of asset classes and any one of them you don't want to use them for the future reference what you can do is you can deactivate that particular asset class from the chart of depreciation so once you deactivate that particular asset class you will not be able to do any transaction postings with respect to that particular asset class so this is how uh, this particular part works will see this now we'll move to the configuration step first we need to go to the SPRO path so the path is asset accounting valuation and in valuation we need to deactivate asset class so now we can go to the path asset accounting valuation and that you can see the deactivate asset class for chart of depreciation in this and that is what we will be processing up today now in this particular step now we'll execute the transaction over here so you can see over here now that there are different asset classes as you can see and there is an option over here to lock lock means you can lock the particular asset class and when you lock it means that 
that particular asset class will be deactivated for that particular period of time till you have marked it locked and none of the transactions is allowed in that particular asset class for example we had our own asset class 9100 9200 93 94 9700 so any of these you can you can mark as lock and you can save that and later on you can go back and you can try to post certain transactions in the asset class that is 9100 <coughs> so you can create you can try to do any kind of a transactions in the asset related to land and you will see that land asset class will not allow you to do any transactions related to the to that particular respective asset classes so similarly if you want you can go and you can assign plant and um, even building and when you lock that building part then the system will not allow to process any asset class any asset which represents the asset class building for the transaction till the period that particular asset class has been marked as lock so this is how this particular deactivation means this means that once you lock the system, that particular asset class you are not allowed to do any transaction posting in that particular asset class so you will not allowed to do any posting in any of the assets which is from the asset class 9200 so in the same way you can save it and you can go back and you can do try posting certain transactions with f-90 or any other transaction and you will see that the changes in it so that is it over here in this particular building now moving to the next transaction next configuration step is specify rounding up of net book value or depreciation so in this what you can do is when a depreciation is calculated it is calculated as per the percentage assigned to it the, the depreciation could be in decimals that is it can be in dollars and cent as well so if you want you can round off that particular depreciation amount from cent to dollars and the depreciation will be posted as a round off amount in the system so how we can do that there is a configuration for that as well because there are certain laws which says that the depreciation can be rounded off and can be posted in some or the other countries as per their respective accounting policies in the, their particular country so we'll see this how this can be done in the system we'll move to the path so the path says valuation amount specifications and then spe specify rounding off So what we do is we need to go to asset accounting then to valuation and then to the amount specification over here company and depreciation area. So this when you do the customization for rounding off it becomes applicable for the whole depreciation area. You just need to take note of it. You cannot do rounding off for a particular asset class or so if it will be done it will be done for all the different asset. Uh, classes that is the at the depreciation area level so that we will be now doing over here we'll go to the next expanding this so where you can find the option specify rounding off of net book value and or depreciation execute this so as you see in that in this we have the option of rounding of the depreciation calculated or the net book value or even the replacement value you can round up or you can round down or you can round to the nearest hole so what you need to do is you need to select your company code enter to move to the next screen 
So where you will find your company code in this, you need to select your company code. Then you, do, you need to go to the rounding specification, double click on that. Now in the rounding specification, you will find the two different depreciation area. So to which depreciation area you want the rounding of rule to be applied, you need to double click on that. So when I double click on the depreciation area 01, you will see the options over here. Rounding specification. You want to round off the net book value at the year end. Then in that case, you can select the net book value. If you want to round off the depreciation, which is calculated automatically by the system, in that case, you can select the automatically calculated depreciation. And now, if you want the depreciation to be rounded up or down or maybe uh, to the nearest as a whole, then you need to select the arithmetic rounding as well. So what I will be doing is I will be taking automatic calculated depreciation and over here you need to take the automatic rounding if you want it to be rounded off to the nearest as a whole or if you want it to be rounded up or down that can even be do as per the requirement as you want to do. So this is something which you can select configure test and you will come out to the results of this. So this is what you will be selecting over here and you need to go and you can save that. So now this particular change will be applicable for the depreciation area 0, 1. And the request has been saved. So you can see it's now become applicable for the depreciation area 0, 1. The automatic calculated depreciation and the automatic rounding. That means now the depreciation which is calculated by the system will be rounded off to the nearest as a whole. Moving to the next step, specify other version in company code. Now other version in this means that the fiscal year variant. In asset accounting, you specify a fiscal year variant for asset accounting on company code level that is different from one in the FI general ledger. Normally the configuration is not required in in uh, this particular cases unless you have a different fiscal year for asset accounting. So in case the company has got a different fiscal year for the asset accounting and the fiscal year for the company uh, other reportings is different then you need to go and you need to define the fiscal year over here in this particular configuration step. So what we do in this is we, we go to the, to the configuration step valuation fiscal year, fiscal year variant and then specify other version. So moving to that particular path. So we need to go to the SPRO. Then we will be going to financial accounting new and then to the asset accounting. SAP reference IMG. So we can check the path now over here. Financial accounting, then to asset accounting, valuation, fiscal year, then to fiscal year variant. And over here, now we can select this specify other version on company code level. And even if you want depreciation to be posted as per fiscal year variant, that option is also there. So we can go to the specify other version in company code level. So over here you can see that the fiscal year option over here is blank. If you go for company code 1200, you can define your fiscal year over here if your asset accounting fiscal year and your financial accounting fiscal year are different to each other. In that case, we define this particular fiscal year variant over here. Else, we will not do any, any customization over here. So, we will not uh, be doing any configuration here since we do not require the fiscal year variant as of now, which is different from the GL fiscal year. So, right now, our fiscal year is same with that of the financial accounting. So, no changes will be done in this. But, you should be knowing it how 
a particular fiscal year can be defined if the fiscal year of a asset accounting is different from that of the financial accounting so moving back now we'll move to the next configuration part determine depreciation area for a special depreciation the order of depreciation calculation can be changed in the standard system normally ordinary depreciation is calculated before a special depreciation so to check the special depreciation we need to go to the path financial accounting asset accounting then to depreciation then to special depreciation and to determine depreciation area so will not be making any changes in this customize this configuration step but we just revisiting it so as to understand what is this all about so we need to go to the depreciation then to special depreciation and then to determine the depreciation area over here so whenever you do that it asks you the chart of depreciation so you need to put your chart of depreciation that is 1 to 0 0 enter so it takes you to the screen over here you can see that there are two different depreciation area as we have created two depreciation areas for our company code one is 0 1 and another is 10 so you can see over here the special depreciation is not been marked in the first case whereas it has been asked for this it has been marked for the second case as we have earlier discussed that special depreciation is applicable when there is a change in the policies or there is a change in the legal laws as per the company act or as per the US GAAP or the regulatory authorities so accordingly you can mark over here the requirement right now we will not be doing any changes because special depreciation is normally applicable in the second depreciation area even if you want to make the special depreciation applicable in there in the depreciation area 01 you can go and you can assign that to it and that special depreciation will become applicable for depreciation area 01 as well so that's up to you accordingly you can go and you can post the special depreciation you can see that uh, how it uh, get posted and what impact it does to the asset in the system so we'll not be doing any changes in it right now we just need to revisit and need to understand how this works similarly we'll go back and we'll see for the next that is for unplanned depreciation so we'll see over here for unplanned depreciation as well you can see over here unplanned depreciation we'll go and we'll check in that as well so you need to go to the depreciation area over here as well in it So, in this step, you define the depreciation area in which you want to manage your unplanned depreciation. This specification means that this value type is allowed in these depreciation areas. So, once you select the fields over here, you can see they are already been selected. So, once you select these, that means that the, the value type is allowed in these depreciation areas that is 0, 01 and 0 and 10 that is the system does not issue an error message when you go for an unplanned depreciation posting why because you have already allowed the system to accept the unplanned depreciation over here so that is it you need to select this because and as a standard practice this is automatically selected because unplanned depreciation is something which is very common and it normally happens in the course of the business as we discussed unplanned depreciation is the depreciation which is caused without any plan like due to loss of uh, uh, in the asset value due to fire theft or any other kind of unforeseen situations or such so it's that is it all about for the unplanned depreciation over here we need we will go back in this and we move to the next screen now the next is define the cutoff value key now this is again important it comes normally in uh, into the companies where they want to maintain certain scrap value 
let's take a scenario in this case that you purchase an asset of suppose uh, $50,000 and you know that there will be 10% as a scrap in that so what you can do is you can assign that scrap as a percentage or as a value from the very beginning so that when the, the asset value reaches to that value after the number of years of its life it will stop calculating depreciation on that particular asset so for certain countries this cutover value is a legal requirement that you need uh, that you end depreciation when a certain value is reached you can enter an absolute scrap value in the asset master record or you can enter a, a percentage of a scrap value as a cutoff value as uh, in the calculation key which we calculate that is the depreciation key which we which, which we uh, create so in this step you define the calculation key for automatically determining the scrap value by the system for each calculation key you need to specify the percentage of the base method that should be used as a cutoff value so let's go to this particular part and check so you need to go to the valuation method and in that you need to go to further settings and that you can see over here define the cutoff value key so where you need to go and you need to execute this particular part so you can see over here there are number of cutoff values have already been defined let's take these all which have been defined over here are by standard system and let's take uh, some of them let's uh, double click on CL1 and we check the customization in this so you can see that uh, the screen has a cutoff value of 10% as it shows from the description the scrap value reduction from the base value so what it does it it reduces the 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 scrap values value by that much of a scrap value and accordingly the depreciation is calculated so the percentage of depreciation base that should be used as a cutoff value over here now you need also to decide that what will be the start date for calculation of percentage so that should be from asset capitalization date or it should be from ordinary depreciation is start for the asset so that is normally cases it it always from the asset capitalization part so once you did this you can go to and you can double click onto this over here the levels and once you go to this levels you can see over here that the details have been maintained valid from and to will always remain the same validity in years we always keep it as a maximum and the months valid it will be for the whole 12 months and over here the most important part you maintain the cutoff as a percentage over here you can see 10 percent has been maintained if you want you can maintain 5 percent 15 percent as per your requirement uh, for that particular asset so whatever the percentage you define over here that much percentage of uh, the base value will be taken as a scrap value and on as the system reaches to that particular scrap value the system will stop calculating depreciation on that particular asset so this is how your cutover value is been used and once this particular cutover value keys is prepared as you can see this key you need to prepare similarly if you need any key for 20 percent you need to go to the new entries and you need to create a 20 percent key is just similar to cl1 and just the percentage will change in that instead of 10 percent there will be 20 percent and then that key is been assigned in the depreciation key also as well and that depreciation key is assigned in your asset master in the depreciation area tab 
So this is cutover value and this is an interesting part. You must know this as this is a very common which comes to you in many of the companies as a requirement. Moving to the next. Define assign settlement profile. This even we have seen yesterday when we did asset under construction where the profile was not been maintained and later on we define the profile in the system for that. So we can go to this customization over here asset counting transaction capitalization of asset under construction. So we need to go to the transaction then we need to go to capitalization under construction so this particular customization that is uh, what we are doing right now belongs to when you are doing asset under construction case so this is basically for settlement of AUC assets you need to create or assign a profile to your asset uh, to your basically depreciation area and accordingly that uh, starts uh, that uh, the system decides which settlement it has to take so let's move over here execute this now over here you need to if you need to define your own settlement profile in that case you need to go to define settlement profile over here double click on this so it takes you over here there are number of settlement profiles which have already been defined as a normal standard the profile which we use is AI as a standard practice but in case you want you can copy this and you can create your own as well so right now we will be using AI as a settlement profile but you need to assign this profile to your company code so over here if you remember yesterday uh, when we did uh, sorry not yesterday it's the last training session when we did this particular AUC asset session in that even we did this particular step as the profile was not assigned to the company code and we assigned the company code with the profile AI that is as settlement of asset under construction. So you need to assign this profile to your company code so that you can process the AUC that is asset under construction processes. Now moving to the next is assign forms so to assign forms basically assigning form means that uh, when uh, what kind of a forms or prints you can generate from the system so to have those kind of a prints you need to go to the information system over here and in that you can find that there are option of defining and assigning the forms over here so you need to execute this particular part and once you execute you can go and you can assign asset class or history seat over here double click on to the asset class now over here you can see that you need to assign this particular layout in respect to your asset classes so that that particular layout can be used for taking the printout for the assets so you can see uh, even we defined this particular earlier uh, if you remember that we we assign this particular over here so you need to assign your particular asset classes to the layout so the layout will be FIAA underscore F001 that is a standard layout by SAP itself so that same layout we will be assigning to our asset classes over here so on the basis of this particular layout or uh, this layout consists a set of forms for evaluation of asset history that is the asset chart in the asset accounting information system and even for printing levels with asset informations like barcodes using inventory list the layout sets determine the layout of the list of printout of this report you can store a separate layout set in every asset class as you can see over here every asset class has been assigned to one particular layout over here so if you want you can have a different layout as well as per your requirement otherwise you can have this particular standard layout assigned to you 
Note that the report evaluates only fixed assets with an active history management indicator in the asset master record. You can enter the layout set for the inventory list when you start the report. The layout which we have assigned is SAP supplied layout as a default for asset chart and the layout sets if for the inventory if you need the for the inventory the layout is different that is FIAA F0003 that is for the inventory levels if you need the inventory details for that so that is it over here so that are some of the extra configuration steps that one should know as a part as a consultancy and you never know that these kind of a things come up to you for as a requirement from the client side so this is it for the asset accounting now we are done with the asset accounting as a whole you can practice it you can practice your basic configuration steps which we have done till the last training session and once you are very much clear with them you can go through to this extra configuration steps which we did uh, today in this particular session and in this many of them are optional but some of them are very uh, very important and very uh, important to understand their concepts because they are very much linked to some of the configurations which we have done in the last number of training sessions. So that is it in the asset accounting. We'll see you in the next training session with a new topic. Thank you.